500,000 years had passed since the Galactic Council's devastating attack on Earth. The Council, in their fear and arrogance, had deemed humanity too dangerous, too unpredictable to be allowed to thrive. The once blue planet, teeming with life and potential, had been reduced to cosmic rubble, its ashes scattered across the galaxy. Yet in the vastness of space, a flicker of life persisted. On the edges of known space, a hidden armada moved silently. These ships, sleek and bristling with advanced technology, were the last remnants of the human race. Built in secret and hidden in the shadows of the galaxy, they carried the descendants of Earth, descendants who had never seen their ancestral home, but carried its memory in their veins. Among them was the flagship, Elysium, a marvel of engineering and the heart of the human resistance. Captain Serena Draven, a stern and formidable leader, stood on the bridge, her eyes fixed on the holographic star map. She was a woman of determination, forged in the fires of loss and driven by a singular purpose, to restore humanity's place in the galaxy. Captain, Lieutenant Rafe Anders called out, breaking her reverie. We're approaching the coordinates. Excellent, Serena replied, her voice steady. Prepare for stealth mode. We cannot afford to be detected. As the ship's systems hummed into action, cloaking the Elysium from prying sensors, Serena's thoughts drifted to the mission ahead. They were heading to the remains of the solar system, a place long abandoned by the living but rich in history and secrets. Their objective was simple yet monumental, to recover ancient human technology and artifacts that could give them an edge in their fight against the Galactic Council. Scanning the debris field now, Lieutenant Anders reported, detecting several large masses could be what we're looking for. Deploy the drones, Serena ordered. We need to recover whatever we can find. Small, agile drones launched from the ship, weaving through the wreckage, searching for anything of value. Serena watched the feed, her heart heavy with the weight of her ancestors' sacrifice. They had paid the ultimate price, but their legacy would not be forgotten. Captain, we found something, Anders said, his voice tinged with excitement. It's an old satellite, still intact, and there's a signal. A signal? Serena's brow furrowed. After all this time? Yes, ma'am. It appears to be a distress beacon looping continuously. Bring it aboard, Serena commanded, and prepare for decryption. This could be the breakthrough we've been waiting for. The colony was a self-sustaining ecosystem, powered by fusion reactors and shielded by layers of advanced camouflage technology. Its existence was a well-guarded secret known only to a select few. Commander Serena Draven, the leader of this hidden enclave, walked through the bustling corridors, her presence a source of inspiration and resolve for the inhabitants. New Haven was more than just a refuge. It was a hub of innovation and preparation. Scientists and engineers worked tirelessly in underground labs, developing new technologies and improving old ones. Among these innovations were the war beasts, bioengineered creatures designed for combat with intelligence and loyalty to their human handlers. Dr. Marcus Voss, the head of the War Beast program, was a man of unparalleled genius and ambition. In his lab, a team of geneticists and cyberneticists worked to perfect the next generation of war beasts. These creatures, bred from a mix of Earth's most formidable predators and enhanced with cybernetic implants, were designed to be the ultimate warriors. Dr. Voss, Serena greeted as she entered the lab. How goes the progress? Commander, Voss replied, his eyes gleaming with excitement. We are on the cusp of a breakthrough. The latest batch of war beasts shows remarkable improvements in both strength and intelligence. They're ready for field testing. Serena nodded, her gaze shifting to the containment units where the war beasts were held. Massive and powerful, each beast was a testament to the potential of human ingenuity. Among them was Ragnar, a thunder wolf with metallic claws and a plasma emitter embedded in its throat, and Lyra, a night stalker equipped with adaptive camouflage and enhanced sensory arrays. Prepare them for deployment, Serena ordered. We'll need every advantage we can get for the upcoming mission. As preparations were made, Serena continued her rounds, visiting other sections of the colony. She passed through the training grounds where soldiers practiced combat maneuvers and tactical drills. 
The atmosphere was charged with a sense of purpose and urgency. Every person here knew their role and the stakes involved. In the heart of New Haven, a command center coordinated all activities. Here, intelligence was gathered, missions were planned, and strategies were devised. Lieutenant Rafe Anders, Serena's second-in-command, monitored various feeds and data streams. Commander, Anders reported as Serena approached, our scouts have returned with intel from the Council's outposts. There's increased activity along the border regions. They might be preparing for something big. Good work, Anders, Serena said, reviewing the data. We need to stay one step ahead. The Council underestimates us, but we can't afford to underestimate them. The Council's arrogance had been their greatest weapon. Believing humanity to be extinct, they had grown complacent. But Serena knew better. She knew that the element of surprise was their greatest ally, and that every move had to be calculated with precision. As the day drew to a close, the colony settled into a quiet hum of activity. Serena stood in her quarters, gazing at an old, faded photograph of Earth. The image, a relic from a bygone era, was a constant reminder of their mission. We will make them remember, she whispered, a fierce determination in her eyes. We will make them pay. In the subterranean depths of New Haven, a facility unlike any other hummed with energy and purpose. This was the War Beast Lab, where humanity's most ambitious project took shape. Here, science and nature fused to create beings of unparalleled might. War Beasts, designed to be the vanguard of humanity's resurgence. Dr. Marcus Voss stood at the helm, overseeing the final preparations for awakening the latest batch of War Beasts. His sharp eyes scanned the myriad of screens displaying vital statistics and genetic sequences. Each war beast was a masterpiece, a testament to years of research and engineering. Initiate the awakening sequence, Voss commanded, his voice echoing with a mix of anticipation and pride. Technicians moved swiftly, their hands dancing across control panels. Large containment pods, each holding a war beast in stasis, began to hum and glow. The creatures inside, suspended in a state between life and death, were about to take their first conscious breaths. In Pod Alpha, Ragnar the Thunderwolf stirred. A massive creature with a muscular frame and sleek metallic enhancements, Ragnar was designed for both brute force and tactical prowess. His claws, tipped with retractable tungsten blades, glinted as he flexed his limbs. A low, rumbling growl emanated from his chest a sound that spoke of raw power and restrained aggression. In Pod Beta, Lyra the Night Stalker emerged from the shadows. Her lithe, panther-like body was a blend of biological stealth and technological augmentation. Adaptive camouflage shimmered across her fur, allowing her to blend seamlessly with her surroundings. Her eyes, enhanced with multispectrum vision, flickered as she surveyed her environment. Vitals are stable! reported Dr. Elena Way, Voss's right hand in the project. They're responding well to the stimuli. Excellent, Voss replied, a satisfied smile crossing his lips. Prepare for synchronization with their handlers. Ready, Jax? Voss asked. Always, Jax replied, stepping forward to interface with Ragnar. A neural link formed, bridging human and beast. Thoughts and instincts melding into a single, cohesive entity. The room held its breath as the synchronization process completed. Ragnar's eyes locked onto Jack's, a silent understanding passing between them. They were partners, bound by purpose and destiny. Handlers and war beasts, proceed to the training arena, Voss instructed. It's time to see what they can do. In the vast reinforced arena, the war beasts showcased their capabilities. Ragnar, guided by Jack's, moved with astonishing speed and precision his attacks calculated and devastating. Lyra, paired with Sergeant Kara Singh, vanished into the environment, reappearing only to strike with lethal efficiency. Dr. Voss watched with pride as his creations performed beyond expectations. These war beasts, with their unmatched power and loyalty, were the key to humanity's resurgence. As the training session concluded, a sense of exhilaration and confidence permeated the facility. Well done, everyone, Voss declared. Today we take a giant leap towards reclaiming our destiny. Counselor Zarek of the Drakthul stood tall, his reptilian features reflecting his race's martial prowess. He addressed the assembly with confidence, 
dismissing recent reports of human activity as baseless rumors. The notion that humans could have survived is preposterous, Zarek declared. We eliminated that threat half a million years ago. Our focus should remain on the escalating tensions between the Xylarian and Cerulean sectors. A murmur of agreement rippled through the chamber. The Council, long accustomed to their dominance, saw no reason to believe in the resurgence of a long-vanquished foe. Their attention was divided among more immediate concerns, territorial disputes, trade agreements, and political maneuverings. However, not all were so dismissive. Ambassador Thalra of the Cerulean race, a being of grace and insight, harbored doubts. Her intuitive nature and diplomatic acumen had earned her respect, but she sensed something amiss. Counselors, Thalra interjected, her voice calm but firm. While I agree that our current conflicts are pressing, we should not entirely disregard the possibility of human remnants. History has shown that underestimating an opponent can lead to our downfall. Zarek scoffed. Are we to chase ghosts, Ambassador? Our resources are better spent elsewhere. Thalra remained composed. I propose a small investigative task force discreetly deployed to verify these claims. If nothing else, it will put these rumors to rest and allow us to focus on our more pressing matters. The chamber buzzed with deliberation. Finally, the High Counselor, an elder statesman of the Luminari, raised his hand for silence. Ambassador Thalra's suggestion is reasonable, a minimal investment for potential peace of mind. The motion is approved. With that, a small task force was assembled, tasked with discreetly investigating the fringes of the galaxy where human activity had been rumored. Thalra knew this was a gamble, but her instincts urged her to proceed. Something in the galaxy was stirring, and she intended to uncover the truth. As the meeting adjourned, Thalra made her way to her private chambers. She activated a secure communication link, connecting with a trusted associate within the Cerulean Intelligence Network. Prepare our best operatives, she instructed. We need to verify these reports and keep it covert. If humanity is indeed rising from the ashes, we must understand their intentions before the rest of the Council. Thalra's heart raced with anticipation and caution. The galaxy's equilibrium was delicate, and any resurgence of humanity could tip the scales in unforeseen ways. She had to be prepared for whatever lay ahead, whether it was a new alliance or a rekindling of old hostilities. In the shadows of the galaxy, hidden from the Council's watchful eyes, humanity was stirring. And as Thalra set her plans in motion, the stage was being set for a confrontation that would reshape the fate of countless worlds. In the war room, a holographic display detailed the depot's layout and defenses. Draven, standing at the center, addressed her assembled team of officers and war beast handlers. We've been in the shadows for too long, she began, her voice steady and resolute. Tonight we strike. Our objective is to seize supplies and send a clear message. Humanity is not extinct. We are here and we will fight. Lieutenant Rafe Anders, ever the strategist, pointed to key locations on the map. Our intel suggests minimal resistance. We'll split into three teams. Team Alpha, led by myself, will secure the main gate. Team Bravo, under Sergeant Kara Singh, will disable the communications array. Team Charlie, led by Commander Draven, will infiltrate the storage facility with the war beasts. The teams dispersed, making final preparations. Draven approached Jax Carter, who stood with Ragnar, the Thunderwolf. Ready for this? she asked. Jax nodded, his expression determined. We've trained for this. Ragnar and I are ready. Under the cover of darkness, the strike teams boarded stealth shuttles and launched toward the depot. The journey was tense but silent, each member focused on the mission ahead. As they neared their target, the shuttles cloaked, rendering them invisible to enemy sensors. The depot loomed below a sprawling complex of storage units and landing pads. Team Alpha landed first, moving swiftly to secure the main gate. Using a combination of stealth and precision, they neutralized the guards, paving the way for the other teams. Team Bravo, moving with equal efficiency, reached the communications array. Sergeant Singh and her unit planted charges on the control panels, ensuring that no distress signal could be sent. With a synchronized detonation, the array went dark. Draven and Team Charlie infiltrated the storage facility. 
Inside, crates of supplies and advanced technology awaited. Draven signaled to Jax and the handlers. Release the war beasts. Ragnar and Lyra moved with lethal grace, taking down any guards who crossed their path. The handlers worked in perfect sync with their war beasts, their neural links allowing for seamless communication and coordination. The element of surprise was complete, and the depot fell within minutes. Load up as much as we can carry, Draven ordered. We need to be out of here before reinforcements arrive. As the teams worked quickly to load the shuttles, a sense of triumph filled the air. The first strike had been a success, a clear demonstration of human resilience and capability. With the supplies secured, they returned to New Haven, their spirits high and their resolve strengthened. The raid on the supply depot did not go unnoticed. Word spread quickly through the galaxy, reaching the ears of various factions. Some saw the resurgence of humans as an opportunity, while others viewed it as a new threat. In the chaotic aftermath, the nomadic Kavari sent an envoy to New Haven. These traders and scavengers were known for their neutrality and resourcefulness. Commander Draven met with the Kavari leader, Eldar Yarin, in a secure chamber deep within the colony. Commander Draven, Yarin greeted with a nod, we've heard of your recent accomplishments. The Kavari value skilled allies and profitable ventures. Draven eyed Yarin carefully. And what do you propose? Trade and information, Yarin replied smoothly. We can supply you with resources and intelligence in exchange for access to some of your technology. Our network spans the galaxy. Together we could be very beneficial to one another. Draven considered the offer. The Kavari had a reputation for being reliable, albeit opportunistic. Agreed, she said finally. But understand this. Betray us, and you will find that humans are not as weak as the Council believes. Yarin smiled, a gleam of interest in his eyes. Understood, Commander. This is the beginning of a profitable partnership. While new alliances formed, not everyone welcomed the resurgence of humanity. Warlord Krasik of the Drakthul, a race known for their brutal warfare, viewed the humans as a direct threat to his plans for expansion. In his command center, Krasik pored over reports of the raid, his expression darkening with each passing moment. Humans, he spat, his voice filled with contempt. They should have remained extinct. Krasik summoned his top generals, devising a plan to crush the human colony before they could gain further strength. We will strike swiftly and decisively. Let them feel the full might of the Drakthal. Meanwhile, Ambassador Thalra continued her secret investigation. She had intercepted communication between the Kavari and the humans, confirming their resurgence. Torn between her duty to the Council and her growing sympathy for the humans, Thalra knew she had to tread carefully. In a hidden meeting with her trusted aide, she expressed her concerns. If the Council learns of humanity's return, it could lead to war. We must find a way to mediate before it's too late. The aide nodded. Shall we contact them directly? Yes, Thalra decided, but discreetly. We need to understand their intentions and find a way to coexist. The galaxy cannot afford another catastrophic conflict. Dr. Ilara Morgan, the chief historian, handled the fragile digital archives with care. These documents date back to the final years before Earth's fall, she explained. Project Rebirth was a contingency plan devised by Earth's greatest minds. It was meant to ensure our survival and eventual resurgence should the worst occur. Draven leaned in, her eyes scanning the schematics and blueprints. What exactly does Project Rebirth entail? Morgan activated a series of holograms, revealing detailed designs for advanced spacecraft, weaponry, and even genetic augmentation programs. It's a comprehensive blueprint for rebuilding our civilization. There are also strategic outlines for establishing hidden colonies and developing technologies far ahead of their time. Engineer Victor Reyes, one of the colony's top minds, examined the schematics with awe. Some of these designs are centuries ahead of what we have now. If we can decipher and implement them, we'll have a significant advantage over the Galactic Council. The team worked tirelessly, decoding and integrating the ancient knowledge into their current technological framework. Among the most intriguing finds were the blueprints for advanced stealth technology and a new class of warships 
designed for both speed and firepower. As the engineers and scientists delved deeper into the archives, they discovered references to a hidden vault on an abandoned lunar base. This vault was said to contain critical components and prototypes that were never deployed due to Earth's sudden destruction. Commander, Reyes said, excitement in his voice, if we can retrieve those components, we could build a fleet capable of challenging even the Council's strongest forces. Draven nodded, her mind racing with the possibilities. Prepare a reconnaissance team. We're going to that lunar base. The mission to the abandoned lunar base was fraught with danger. The team, led by Lieutenant Rafe Anders, navigated their stealth shuttle through asteroid fields and past dormant defense systems that could spring to life at any moment. Upon landing, they discovered the base in a state of disrepair, its corridors dark and silent, haunted by the ghosts of the past. As they explored, they found the hidden vault, its entrance sealed with advanced encryption. Using the knowledge gained from the archives, they bypassed the security protocols and entered. Inside, they found a treasure trove of technology, prototype weapons, experimental reactors, and the final components needed to complete the warship designs. Pack everything, Anders ordered. This is what we came for. Returning to New Haven, the team was greeted as heroes. The technology they brought back would accelerate their preparations and enhance their chances of success. With each new piece of the puzzle, humanity's path to resurgence became clearer and more attainable. Word of humanity's bold raid on the supply depot had spread like wildfire, reaching the ears of warlord Krasik of the Drakthul. Enraged and eager to assert his dominance, Krasik mobilized his forces for a swift and brutal retaliation against the human colony. However, unaware of the colony's exact location, he aimed to draw them out by attacking one of their suspected hideouts. Krasik's fleet, a formidable armada of heavily armed warships, descended upon a remote moon where they believed the humans had a base. The moon, though devoid of human presence, was rigged with surveillance equipment and defensive traps laid by the humans in anticipation of such an assault. Back in New Haven, Commander Draven watched the unfolding siege through a live feed. They've taken the bait, she said, her voice a mix of relief and determination. It's time to turn the tables. Using the newly integrated stealth technology from the ancient archives, Draven led a strike force towards Drakthul Prime, the heart of Krasik's power. The mission was daring, bordering on reckless, but the element of surprise was in their favor. As the human fleet approached Drakthul Prime, they remained cloaked, slipping past the outer defenses undetected. Inside the flagship, Draven coordinated the attack, her mind sharp and focused. Initiate Phase 1. Target their communication hubs and defense grids. The first wave of attacks was swift and devastating. Precision strikes disabled the planet's primary communication arrays and disrupted their defensive systems. Krasik caught off guard, scrambled to rally his forces. Deploy the war beasts, Draven commanded. Ragnar and Lyra, alongside their handlers, led the charge on the ground. The war beasts moved with lethal efficiency, their enhanced abilities overwhelming the Drakthold defenders. In the skies above, the newly upgraded warships unleashed a barrage of firepower taking down enemy vessels with unprecedented speed. The combination of advanced technology and strategic brilliance left the Drakthul forces in disarray. Krasik, realizing the severity of the situation, attempted to flee. However, Draven anticipated his move. Intercept the warlord's ship, she ordered. A squadron of human fighters, piloted by the best of New Haven's elite, pursued Krasik's vessel. The battle was fierce, but the humans' superior tactics and technology prevailed. Krodzik's ship was disabled, and he was captured. Back on Drakthul Prime, the human forces secured key facilities and declared victory. The siege was over, and the message was clear. Humanity was a force to be reckoned with. The successful assault on one of the galaxy's most feared warlords sent shockwaves through the Galactic Council and its allied races. Returning to New Haven, the victorious forces were met with jubilation. The successful siege not only crippled a significant threat, but also bolstered humanity's standing among potential allies. Commander Draven addressed her people, her voice filled with pride and resolve. 
This victory is just the beginning, she declared. We have shown the galaxy that humanity is not only alive, but also capable of challenging even the mightiest of foes. We will continue to fight, to reclaim our place, and to honor the legacy of Earth. Ambassador Thalra of the Cerulean race had long been a voice of reason and caution within the Galactic Council. Her diplomatic skills were unparalleled, and her intuition told her that the resurgence of humanity was not a threat to be dismissed lightly. Intrigued and concerned by the recent attacks attributed to the remnants of humanity, Thalra decided to take a more proactive approach. In her private quarters on Valthoria Prime, Thalra activated a secure, encrypted communication link to a covert Cerulean outpost near the suspected human territories. Her trusted aide, Lurain, appeared on the holoscreen. Lurain, Thalra began, we need to establish contact with the humans, discreetly. Can you arrange a meeting? Lorraine nodded, her face reflecting Thalra's concern. I'll reach out through our network of intermediaries. It will take time, but I'll ensure it's done carefully. Days turned into weeks as Liren's network worked tirelessly to secure a clandestine meeting. Meanwhile, Thalra continued to navigate the political landscape of the Council, subtly steering discussions away from aggressive actions against the rumored human resurgence. Finally, the message came through. A rendezvous had been arranged in a neutral zone on a remote, uninhabited moon. Thalra, accompanied by a small, trusted team, made her way to the meeting point, their ship cloaked to avoid detection. Upon arrival, they found a single human shuttle waiting. Thalra stepped out, her heart pounding with anticipation. From the shuttle emerged Commander Serena Draven, flanked by Lieutenant Rafe Anders and a pair of war beast handlers. Ambassador Thalra, Draven greeted, her eyes wary but respectful. I am Commander Draven. Thank you for agreeing to meet. Commander Draven, Thalra replied, inclining her head. I appreciate your willingness to talk. The resurgence of humanity has caused quite a stir within the Council. I wish to understand your intentions. Draven's expression softened slightly. We seek to reclaim our place in the galaxy. We have no desire for unnecessary conflict, but we will defend ourselves if provoked. Our aim is to live freely as our ancestors once did. Thalra nodded thoughtfully. And what of the recent attacks on Council assets? Acts of necessity, Draven answered. The Council's refusal to acknowledge our existence forces our hand. We need resources to rebuild, and we need to show we are not to be underestimated. The two leaders continued their dialogue, each probing for information, seeking common ground. Thalra found herself impressed by Draven's resolve and clarity of purpose, it was clear that humanity, despite the odds, had retained a spirit of resilience and determination. Ambassador, Draven said after a lengthy discussion, we need allies. The Council's power is immense, and we cannot stand alone. Will you support us or at least consider mediating on our behalf? Thalra paused, weighing her options. Aligning with the humans could be risky, but ignoring their plight could lead to greater conflicts. I will do what I can, she promised. But know this, if you provoke the Council further, my influence will only go so far. We must tread carefully. Draven extended her hand. Agreed. We will do our best to avoid unnecessary conflict. Thank you, Ambassador. Back in New Haven, the atmosphere was one of cautious optimism. The successful raid on the Council depot and the promising dialogue with Thalra had boosted morale. However, beneath the surface, tensions simmered. The colony was a melting pot of different factions and ideologies, and not everyone agreed on the best path forward. Lieutenant Cade, an ambitious and charismatic officer, had been vocal about his dissatisfaction with Commander Draven's cautious approach. He believed that a more aggressive stance was necessary to secure humanity's future. Secretly, Cade began to gather like-minded individuals, forming a splinter group within the colony. In the shadows of New Haven's lower levels, Cade met with his followers. Draven's hesitance is costing us valuable time, he argued. We should be striking harder, faster. The Council sees us as nothing more than a nuisance. We need to show them our true strength. His words resonated with those who felt frustrated by the slow pace of their resurgence. The splinter group grew, their meetings becoming more frequent and their plans more audacious. 
Cade envisioned a bold strike against a major council installation, something that would force the galaxy to take humanity seriously. Unbeknownst to Cade, his actions had not gone unnoticed. Commander Draven, always vigilant, had suspected discontent brewing within the ranks. She had tasked Lieutenant Anders with monitoring the situation discreetly. Anders infiltrated one of Cade's meetings, using his skills to blend in and gather intelligence. What he uncovered was alarming, a plot to seize control of New Haven and launch a reckless attack on a heavily fortified council base. The next day, Anders reported his findings to Draven. Cade is planning a coup, he warned. If we don't act now, he could destabilize everything we've worked for. Draven's eyes hardened. We cannot afford internal strife. Gather the loyalists. We need to end this before it begins. That night, as Cade and his followers prepared to make their move, Draven and her loyalists struck first. The operation was swift and decisive. Loyalist forces led by Anders and the war beast handlers surrounded the Splinter Group's hideout. Cade, Draven called out as she entered the chamber flanked by Ragnar and Lyra. This ends now. Cade, realizing he had been outmaneuvered, stood defiant. You're too weak, Draven. Your hesitation will be our downfall. Draven stepped forward, her gaze unwavering. It's not weakness to be strategic, Cade. It's what has kept us alive. You've endangered us all with your recklessness. A tense standoff ensued, but Cade's followers, seeing the overwhelming force against them, began to surrender. Cade himself, after a brief struggle, was subdued and taken into custody. The next morning, Draven addressed the colony. We cannot afford division, she declared. Our strength lies in our unity and our ability to work together towards our common goal. Lieutenant Cade's actions were misguided, but let this be a reminder to us all. We must remain vigilant and focused. The path ahead is fraught with danger, but together we are unstoppable. The swift resolution of the coup attempt reaffirmed Draven's leadership and reinforced the colony's unity. It was a stark reminder that the greatest threats sometimes come from within and the importance of loyalty and trust in their shared mission. Commander Serena Draven, utilizing her alliance with the Kavari, attended the summit disguised as a Kavari emissary. Her goal was to gather intelligence and assess the Council's stance on the human resurgence. With her were Lieutenant Rafe Anders and a small team, all expertly disguised to avoid detection. As the summit began, High Councilor Valen, an elder statesman of the Luminari, called for order. Councilors, we face unprecedented challenges. The recent attacks on our supply lines and the rumors of human activity demand our immediate attention. Councilor Zarek of the Drakthol spoke first, his voice filled with disdain. These humans are pests. We should eradicate them once and for all. They are a threat to our stability. Ambassador Thalra, ever the diplomat, interjected. While I agree that we must address these attacks, we should also seek to understand the humans' intentions. An outright assault could lead to prolonged conflict and unnecessary loss of life. Zarek sneered. Understanding? They're savages. We should crush them before they become a real threat. Draven, carefully observing the exchanges, noted the divisions within the Council. She needed to exploit these rifts to gain any advantage for humanity. As discussions continued, she quietly activated a covert listening device, transmitting the conversations back to New Haven. The debate grew heated, with factions forming around different approaches. Some advocated for diplomacy, others for immediate military action. The Cerulean representative, known for their analytical prowess, proposed a compromise. Let us first gather more intelligence, deploy a task force to locate their base and assess their capabilities. Then we can decide our course of action. The motion was approved and a task force was organized. Draven knew she had to act quickly to protect New Haven. As the summit adjourned, she and her team slipped away, blending into the departing delegations. Back in New Haven, the information from the summit was invaluable. The colony's leaders gathered to strategize their next moves. We have a window of opportunity, Draven stated. The council is divided. We need to fortify our defenses and prepare for their task force. If we can turn them back, we'll buy ourselves more time. Engineer Victor Reyes, who had been working on integrating the recovered technologies, spoke up. 
We've made significant progress with the stealth systems and defensive upgrades. We can make New Haven nearly undetectable, Lieutenant Anders added. We should also consider striking preemptively. Hit them before they hit us. Draven nodded. Agreed. We'll bolster our defenses and plan a counterstrike. The Council's overconfidence is our greatest weapon. Meanwhile, in New Haven, preparations were in full swing. Draven and her team worked tirelessly to integrate the new technologies and ready their defenses. War beasts and their handlers underwent rigorous training, preparing for the inevitable clash. The tension in the colony was palpable as the day of the task force's arrival approached. Draven stood in the command center, monitoring the incoming fleet. They're here, she announced. All units, prepare for battle. As the Council's ships entered Cerulean space, they encountered unexpected resistance. New Haven's enhanced stealth technology masked their true location, creating a maze of false signals and decoys. The task force, led by Admiral Varick, struggled to navigate the treacherous terrain. Deploy the war beasts, Draven ordered, and initiate the counterattack. From hidden bases and cloaked ships, human forces launched a surprise assault. The war beasts, led by Ragnar and Lyra, tore through the Council's ranks with devastating efficiency. Ragnar's metallic claws and Lyra's adaptive camouflage gave them a lethal edge in close combat, while the handlers provided strategic guidance and support. Admiral Varick, realizing the severity of the situation, ordered a tactical retreat. Regroup and reassess. We can't afford to lose more ships. But Draven was relentless. Pursue them. We need to ensure they understand the consequences of underestimating us. The humans, utilizing their advanced warships and war beasts, pressed the advantage. The battle raged across Cerulean space, with the Council's task force struggling to fend off the relentless attacks. Despite their superior numbers, the element of surprise and the humans' fierce resolve tipped the scales. Amidst the chaos, Ambassador Thalra, who had secretly joined the task force to monitor the situation, intervened. Using her influence, she brokered a temporary ceasefire. Both sides must stand down, she urged, through the communications network. Further bloodshed will only lead to mutual destruction. Draven, recognizing the strategic value of a ceasefire, ordered her forces to halt. Stand down, but remain on alert. The battlefield grew silent. The eerie calm, a stark contrast to the previous carnage. Thalra initiated communications with Draven. Commander, we need to talk. This conflict cannot continue like this. Draven, her expression unreadable, replied, Agreed, but understand this. We will not be hunted again. We will defend ourselves. Thalra nodded. I understand. Let us find a way to coexist. There's been enough destruction. The temporary truce marked a turning point. Both sides withdrew to their respective territories to regroup and reassess. In New Haven, the victory against the Council's task force was celebrated. But the cost of war weighed heavily on everyone. Draven addressed the colony, her voice filled with a mix of pride and caution. We have proven our strength today, but this is just the beginning. We must continue to build, to prepare, and to seek allies. The path to reclaiming our place in the galaxy will not be easy, but together we will prevail. The temporary truce with the Galactic Council provided New Haven with a crucial window of opportunity. Under Commander Serena Draven's leadership, the colony focused on fortifying their defenses and delving deeper into the ancient archives from Old Earth. The newfound technologies and strategies from Project Rebirth were now fully integrated, giving humanity an edge they desperately needed. In a secure underground chamber, Draven and her top officers gathered around a holographic projection table. Engineer Victor Reyes had been working tirelessly to decode and implement the ancient data, and now he had a new discovery to present. Commander, Reyes began, his voice filled with excitement. We've uncovered detailed schematics for an advanced communication and surveillance network. This system was designed to intercept and decode encrypted signals from great distances, potentially allowing us to monitor council communications and movements in real time. Draven's eyes widened. This could change everything. How soon can we have it operational? We've already begun construction, Reyes replied. Within a few weeks, we should have the first nodes online. As work continued on the surveillance network, 
Lieutenant Rafe Anders led a reconnaissance mission to a derelict space station rumored to hold valuable information. The station, once a hub of trade and communication, had been abandoned for centuries. Upon arrival, Anders and his team discovered a hidden vault containing records of covert council operations and intelligence reports. Back in New Haven, the decrypted data revealed startling truths. The council had been aware of human survivors for decades, possibly even centuries, but had chosen to keep this information classified. Their complacency and internal conflicts had prevented them from acting decisively against the humans. These records show that the Council has been hiding their knowledge of us, Draven announced to her advisors. They feared our potential, even in our weakened state. This knowledge gives us leverage. With this new information, Draven decided to take a bold step. She sent a secure transmission to Ambassador Thalra, revealing the Council's duplicity and proposing a formal meeting to discuss terms for coexistence. Thalra, already sympathetic to the human cause, was both shocked and intrigued by the revelations. She agreed to meet on neutral ground, bringing along a small delegation of trusted council members who were open to negotiation. The meeting took place on the serene, uninhabited moon of Solara. Draven and her team arrived first, their war beasts and guards stationed at the perimeter for security. Thalra arrived shortly after, accompanied by counselors who shared her vision for a more inclusive galaxy. Commander Draven, Thalra greeted, extending her hand. Your revelations have caused quite a stir within the Council. We are here to listen. Draven nodded. Ambassador Thalra, counselors, thank you for coming. We have no desire for endless conflict. Our goal is to reclaim our place in the galaxy, to live freely and peacefully. The discussions were intense and candid. Draven presented the decrypted records, highlighting the Council's awareness of human survivors and their attempts to suppress this knowledge. The counselors, initially skeptical, began to see the value in negotiating with humanity rather than continuing a costly war. After hours of negotiation, an agreement was reached. The council would recognize New Haven as a sovereign entity, granting humanity a seat at the interstellar table. In return, the humans agreed to share their advanced technologies and work towards mutual defense and cooperation. The treaty was a historic moment, marking the beginning of a new era for humanity and the galaxy. As the delegations departed, Draven and Thalra exchanged a look of mutual respect and hope. This is just the beginning, Thalra said. We have a long road ahead, but together we can build a future where all races thrive. Draven smiled. Agreed. Let's make it a reality. Warlord Krasik, recovering from his previous defeat seized this opportunity to rally the anti-human factions. He proposed a final, all-out assault on New Haven to eliminate the human threat once and for all. Zarek, emboldened by Krasik's fervor, secured enough support to launch the attack. Unaware of the imminent danger, New Haven continued to strengthen its defenses and integrate its newfound allies. Draven, ever vigilant, sensed the brewing storm and prepared her forces for the possibility of betrayal. The attack came without warning. A massive fleet led by Krasik and Zarek descended upon New Haven with overwhelming force. The skies lit up with the glow of energy weapons and the deafening roar of engines. New Haven's newly constructed defense grid activated, but the sheer number of enemy ships threatened to overwhelm them. Red alert, Draven commanded as alarms blared throughout the colony. All units to battle stations. Engage the defense grid and deploy all available ships and war beasts. Ragnar, Lyra, and their fellow war beasts launched into action, their handlers guiding them through the chaos. The war beasts, now fully trained and battle hardened, tore through enemy lines with ferocity and precision. Human pilots, utilizing the advanced warships and technologies from Project Rebirth, fought valiantly against the onslaught. Despite their valiant efforts, the sheer size of Krasik's fleet began to take its toll. Draven, assessing the situation, realized they needed a decisive move to turn the tide. She called for a strategic counterattack, targeting the flagship where Krasik commanded the assault. Lieutenant Anders, Draven ordered, prepare a strike team. We're going after Krasik's command ship. Without him, their coordination will falter. 
Anders assembled a team of elite soldiers and war beast handlers. They launched a daring assault on Krasik's flagship, using stealth technology to breach its defenses. Inside the ship, fierce close quarters combat ensued. Ragnar and Lyra led the charge, their cybernetic enhancements giving them a critical edge. As Anders and his team fought their way to the bridge, Draven coordinated the fleet, exploiting weaknesses in the enemy formation. The battle reached its climax as Anders confronted Krasik in the command center. Krasik, Anders shouted, his weapon trained on the warlord. This ends now. Krasik, a formidable warrior, lunged at Anders. But Ragnar intercepted him, pinning the warlord to the ground. Yield, Anders demanded, but Krasik refused, fighting with a feral intensity. The struggle was brutal, but Anders and his team prevailed. With Krasik captured, Anders transmitted the news to Draven. Commander, Krasik is down. The flagship is secure. Draven seized the moment. All units, focus fire on the remaining enemy ships. Push them back. The tide of the battle turned. Demoralized and disorganized without their leader, the enemy fleet began to retreat. Counselor Zarek, realizing the futility of the assault, ordered a full withdrawal. As the enemy fleet fled, a cheer erupted throughout New Haven. The colony had withstood the greatest threat it had ever faced, emerging stronger and more unified. In the aftermath, Draven and her allies moved quickly to secure their hard-won peace. In a secure holding cell, Krasik glared defiantly at Draven. You think this changes anything? There will always be those who seek your destruction. Draven met his gaze with steely resolve. Perhaps, but we've shown today that we are not easy prey. We will defend our home our people, and our allies, and we will prevail.